Hi everyone, Lee Veris here, bringing you tips and techniques in Photoshop and Lightroom for teachers and students. Uh, in honor of my new infrared photo workflow course, uh, I'm going to go through a complete start to finish edit here that is similar to the final project in the course. Uh, we're going to start in Lightroom and go into Photoshop for some advanced techniques and end up setting a white point and a black point for printing purposes. I'll also show you how to get rid of that annoying halo that shows up around tree edges. Uh, so this will be a long one, uh, so buckle up your seatbelt and let's get started. Okay, here we are in Lightroom and this is the file straight out of camera. Um, this is uh, my Fujifilm X-Pro2 with uh, a 590 nanometer infrared conversion. And uh, this is the deep color infrared. It, it captures infrared wavelengths as well as a little bit of visible light in the yellow and uh, red wavelengths. So you can kind of see the skewed color here. Um, and uh, this is typical of infrared. We're going to process this now. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you start to finish just, just how I approach these kinds of shots. A very strange color here. And uh, you have to have some experience with infrared just to kind of know what to do. Um, I, of course, go through all of this in my course. But I'm just going to go step by step here and, and just show you what I do with these color infrared uh, shots. So right now, uh, because I was shooting with Velvia in camera as my film simulation, uh, Adobe has picked up that, that camera profile and it's applied it here. So uh, this is a bit uh, saturated for me. I'm going to go back to the Camera Pro Neg standard, which is sort of the standard uh, profile for the Fujifilm camera. And um, you notice it's, it's a lot more subdued in, in its color. So we're going to do, uh, we're gonna do a couple things. Uh, a couple of things that I like to do typically uh, with infrared, just because it always starts off so soft. Um, I'm going to add contrast, but uh, I've found sort of counterintuitively that it, what I have to do is first, <laughs> in a way, I, I've got to reduce the contrast before I start adding it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the shadows all the way. I'm going to open up the blacks all the way. And now it's very soft. And we're going to start adding, um, uh, we're adding contrast back in using the presence sliders. So first slider I'm going to use is the clarity slider. I'm going to bump that all the way. And you'll notice that that sort of put in a little little tiny black, uh, a black point kind of in the little crevice areas here. Um, and now I want to add some more mid-tone depth. And I'm going to use the dehaze slider for that. So we're going to just kind of crank that dehaze up. And I'm keeping a look at this. I want to stop before it gets too dark because I've opened it up to sort of counter the feeling of shadow back here. So I don't want to go too far. Uh, I'm going to knock this back just a little bit more, something like right around in, right around in here. I think this is probably good. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, I, I'd like to get this, this foliage more in the blue uh, range. So it's not quite there. And I can go as far as 2000 in the, in the blue color temperature, um, which, which helps quite a bit. Uh, and also the tint. If I move the tint now towards magenta, all of this area is going to start getting more blue. It's really kind of interesting. So let's, uh, let's just knock that over. It looks sort of lavender now, but we are going to change it. Um, I just want to make sure that there's a good feeling of good color everywhere. And uh, I think something like this is, is good. All right, now I'm going to go to my HSL area because I want to alter the color. It's a little too purple for my taste. Uh, I, like, I like to get kind of this orange and teal sort of look. So I'm, aiming I'm going to aim for an orange sky and more of a, a blue teal uh, uh, foliage color. So um, another thing that I typically do here is I, I'll crank the purple slider over. I'll crank the blue slider over just a little bit. Um, so something, uh, something along these lines. And 
also see how there's a little bit of magenta going in here still. I'm going to crank this slider a little cooler. And uh, so typically what I aim for, might as well go all the way with that, get rid of as much of that magenta as I can. And I, I typically aim for this sort of straight line effect here um, where these sliders line up in, in a way to connect with that aqua slider. So that's giving me a nice, rich kind of blue color here. And that's a good starting place. Now, uh, what I'm thinking of is, is uh, you know, let's make that, that sort of pink look more, uh, more orange. So I'm just taking this red slider. Um, and that's doing it. What's what's interesting here is I'm getting this little kind of magenta kind of halo around the trees and it's showing up here in the middle. Let me see if I can play around with the with the temperature slider to get rid of that. If I, it, I, I have a feeling I'm I if I bring this back to, to more yellow, I may be able to eliminate this pink color in there. Let's just see. Uh, I'm going to try scrubbing right over the numbers here. I can usually get a little bit more uh, uh, finesse in in the uh, in you know it doesn't move as quite as rapidly. So I'm looking until and I yes yeah, certainly that that pink is starting to go away now. Just kind of move it just a little bit. That looks like it's doing it. That's eliminated that that sort of. Uh, obvious pink glow back there and uh, yeah and, and my color is still blue enough that I think this is gonna work now I still feel like this area is lacking a little bit of weight but I don't want to crank the, the dehaze slider now because that's just gonna make these trees back here darker and darker so I'm gonna treat this whole foreground area separately using a linear gradient in, in the mask panel so we'll click on that mask panel button and I'll pick up the linear gradient. Okay, so the I'm going to use this gradient to kind of paint into this whole foreground area. So I'm going to start right up near the horizon and I'll hold down the shift key so that I get a perfect horizontal here in my gradient. Now that I've kind of drawn that and let's I just show you the overlay so you can see where we are going to be applying our uh, adjustments just to this foreground area. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to actually reduce the exposure because I want this area to be a little richer in, uh, in tone so that it'll show more color. So I'm just going to nudge that down. Um, yeah, maybe I, I like to try and balance it out with the, with the trees. So you can kind of see it's getting tonally. It's, it's similar in tone. I may go just a little bit more with this. Uh, something like that and uh, and now to move it away from the sort of lavender purple kind of color here and get it a little more uh, in this sort of blue almost teal color here I'm gonna rotate the hue um, so looking at the rainbow gradient down here you know right now that slider is right about where the purple is and I want to move it towards the blue which is right over in here so I'm just going to rotate all the colors. I'm just going to move the slider over and I will stop when my colors more or less match. So, um, and I, I found that in this case, this is the easiest way to do it. And even though I'm rotating all the hues, uh, it's going to work here. Uh, and let's, let's bump up the saturation a little bit, get this, this, this color just a little bit richer. So we're going to, Lock this up. Something like that. That looks pretty close. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. All righty. So, so now, uh, now I'm gonna take it into Photoshop, and we're gonna do a lot of uh, more advanced techniques. We're gonna do some channel swapping. Uh, it's all uh, to really polish this image off. I have to go into Photoshop now. So, uh, we're gonna go Photo, Edit In and let's open it into Photoshop. Always open as a smart object. So here we go. All right, so there we are. And uh, 
first thing I like to do, let's let's get this to fit. If I just double click on that hand tool, it'll fit on screen. And um, now I'm going to do a little channel swap, but I do it a little bit differently, when, especially when I'm going with this, this blue foliage look. Uh, I'm going to put up a, a, a channel mixer, and instead of swapping red and blue, which is the traditional way of doing this, when, and that, when you do that, you get blue in the sky, and then the, the, the foliage turns usually kind of an orangey color. So you basically would, would invert the color scheme here. I'm going to keep the color scheme pretty much the way it is, but I'm going to swap green and blue. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll go to the green output channel here, and instead of 100% green, I'm going to say 0% green, 100% blue. And then we're going to go to the blue output channel here, and we'll say 0 blue, 100% green. You kind of see now, <laughs> now we have a completely different color scheme, but don't get excited yet. I'm not actually aiming for green here. I'm going to use this in a, apply a, a layer blend mode. So right here, it's, it's normal. We're going to change this either to overlay or soft light. So overlay, overlay has more contrast, um, but it's the, 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 the green, this green color, let's go back to that normal, that green color is now being applied in overlay mode, which enhances contrast. So the highlights are pushing uh, the highlights brighter and the shadows are pushing the shadows darker. Um, so if we go to overlay, we get this increased contrast look. I'm not really done yet. Uh, I'm going to blend out m most of this, but just save the highlight portion of it. So we're going to go to our blend options, the layers options flyaway here and go to blending options and here where we have uh, I'm going to move this over here just a bit um, we're going to blend out the darker tones and save just the, the lighter tone so I'm going to move this dark slider over it so this this means wherever it hits this value right now it's 59 it's going to see through the adjustment, which is the channel mixer adjustment, to the underlying layer, which has that deeper uh, blue color. And you can kind of see what's happening is I've got just those little bit of highlights that the sun is catching the tops of the leaves, and they're, they're picking up that more teal kind of color. And um, I like it. That's actually enhancing the, the, the highlight contrast but it's a little posterized. So the transition's happening right at that 97, right at that value, uh, and it just breaks right there. So I want it to gradually blend. In order to do that, we have to split this slider apart so that we can create a transition. And the trick to doing that is to hold down the Option or Alt key and then split this slider. Um, so I'm going to get a little more of that highlight color by lengthening that transition so it happens a little softer. It looks a little more natural. So I've got some nice nice action going on there. Uh, now I'm, I'd am i like to blend through this red color in the sky. So that's all in the red channel. So I'm going to use the red channel values as a way of controlling how this channel mixer adjustment is applied. So our channel mixer adjustment in overlay mode, I don't want to see it where the sky is bright. So if I move the white slider this time, you'll notice that at some point I, I'm, I'm actually blending through that, that sky. So I'm going to use that trick again, Option or Alt, and split the slider. Little, I'll leave a little bit of that red color. I kind of like that. All right, we will we'll be playing around with this a bit more as we go along here. But now let's just observe what this is doing. So it's really putting in some highlight 
sparkle back into the image uh, and adding some color variation. So we're going from the, the sort of darker blue into a more teal kind of uh, greenish blue. And I'd like to get this area back here lighter. It just seems too shadowed and too dark. Uh, so I want to I want the light, the sunlight to hit these trees better. So I'm going to try and relight this whole area back here. Uh, and I'm going to do it underneath the channel mixer because I know that this is putting these highlights in there. And I just feel like if the rest of the leaves are a little bit lighter, they'd pick up more of, the, of that teal highlight action. So I'm going to, going to turn this off for now. Uh, I'm going to highlight that background layer we're going to add another layer, an empty layer. So I'll just click on the new layer icon here. If it actually goes, here we go. Uh, now this layer, I'm going to use luminosity blending to make, uh, make the trees a little lighter. And I'll probably make the sky a little bit darker too. How am I going to do that? Let's check this out. This is kind of a, an advanced technique I don't see people using this too often, but there's this, this command here in Photoshop called apply image. And that's been in Photoshop for a long time and mostly people never even touch it. And I'm gonna show you how powerful this is. So we're gonna to go to apply image and apply image uh, allows me to take any, any source that's the exact same pixel count as this image and apply it to this empty layer. So right now I'm applying the whole RGB document. But what if I just applied the blue, the blue channel where these trees are going to be lighter at this, this blending mode down here, right? It says multiply because that layer was empty. It's just the same as putting it in normal mode. It doesn't have any effect unless there's pixels in that layer to apply to. So uh, we're using the blue channel as is in this layer. And uh, that's the power of apply image. This is a technique that I use a lot in my 10 channel workflow. So if you're interested in this, you'll see what it's going to do. Um, go check out my 10 channel workflow course. So here's the trick. I've got this. This is the blue channel. Let me label it. That's the blue channel. And I'm going to apply it in luminosity mode. So I change the mode from normal to luminosity. And notice how bright all the, the leaves, the trees get back here. Now this foreground area is too bright. Uh, I'm going to eliminate that with a mask. So we're going to we're going to add a layer mask. So click on that layer mask icon. And now we have a white layer mask. I'm going to paint black in a gradient, much like we use the, the gradient mask panel in Lightroom. I'm going to mask off this whole foreground area and just apply it to the trees in the background. So we get the gradient tool here and I make sure I have black in my foreground. I'm going to use this. Um, uh, this is the uh, foreground to transparent. So our foreground color is black. And uh, I'm going to start down similar location as I did in Lightroom. I'm going to start down here and drag up just a bit. I'm going to make the transition a little softer to get over these this first row of trees here. So now you can kind of see that's very interesting. I've really lightened up just that area and darkened the sky at the same time. This is the power of this luminosity blending. Uh, now, maybe that's a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to put that channel mixer on top, see what it's doing. And it's really made that bright back there. So perhaps I will, I'll knock back some of this so that that tree area is not quite so bright, but uh, compared to the how we brought this in, let's take a look real quick. I'm going to solo this background layer by option or alt clicking on the little eyeball here. So that's what it looked like when we brought it into Photoshop and look where we are now. So we've added a lot of drama in the lighting here, dark in the sky. Uh, again, more drama uh, and um, it's all starting to look pretty good here.
Now, I notice, um, I can kind of see it from far away here. There's, there's this kind of little halo action going around the trees. And uh, that's something that, that we are going to have to get rid of at some point here. I'm also wondering if I may want to I may want to alter how this um, this channel mixer adjustment is applied to the trees back here because I think it's a little strong. However, I don't want to alter this channel mixer here because this area I think it's I think it it looks good. Um, so I'm going to mask off. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mask off this area. So let's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna load the selection from this layer mask because if you notice, and I'll I'll solo that by alt option or alt clicking on it. You'll notice that that layer mask is a, allowing. Uh, the, the luminosity blending in the background to uh, be applied over this. So I've got a I've got a mask already that isolates these trees back here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna apply this mask to this layer mask. So we'll we'll load the there's a couple ways of doing it, but let's let's load. You know what? In fact, let me do it the the, the simple way. I'm gonna throw away this layer mask. And you'll say it asked, do you want to delete that layer mask? Uh, and yes, I want to delete the layer mask. So now there's no layer mask there. And I can option drag or alt drag this layer mask thumbnail onto that channel mixer adjustment and we'll copy the layer mask over there. So let's do that. So copying the layer mask over there. Now I've masked off that whole this whole foreground area. I'm going to bring that back in a minute. Um, so let's uh, let's reduce the opacity of that channel mixer adjustment on the trees. And now I'm going to put the channel mixer back. Let's duplicate this actually. Again, I'm trying to do this the simple way. So I'm going to duplicate the whole layer and then invert that layer mask. So I duplicate that channel mixer adjustment. And now I'm going to invert. I've got that layer mask highlighted, or, or you can see the double lines around it here. So now uh, I just have to do a command or control I to invert that layer mask. And now I've put uh, that channel mixer adjustment into the foreground again, but I'm going to bring this back up to 100%. OK, so now. Very interesting. Now we have a little more balance going on here. And uh, now I want to address this haloing that's going on there. All right, so I can see there's this odd little halo there. And um, we're going to look at the channel, the channels to find a potential mask for that tree edge. So if, if you notice, you go to the red channel, and if I, if I just highlight everything here, uh, the RGB, and then click on the red uh, channel thumbnail, I will solo the channel. So we can kind of see that the, the sky is bright and the trees are darker. Um, so what I want to do is I want to use this mask to isolate where this halo is, and I want to paint over that in the color image. So let's get a, an empty layer. So I'm just going to add an empty layer on here. And uh, this is going to be for the halo edge. I'll just name it. And I'm going to apply uh, a layer mask to that. So first, we'll put a layer mask in. I'll just click on the layer mask icon, and then we that gives us a white layer mask. And now here's here's part of the trick. I'm going to go ahead and use that apply image to get the red channel into that layer mask. So uh, image apply image, and 
it, here we're going to go for the red channel. In fact, if we go, uh, let's go back to the background because I think that, that the red channel is going to be a little cleaner in that background image. And uh, okay, so now we're applying that red channel. You can kind of see it happening here in the layer mask thumbnail already. All right, so let's solo this. So because now that we've got that red channel in there as a mask, we're going to need to edit it. And uh, we want to do this uh, directly. So I'm going to solo this layer mask so we can look at it while we're editing it. So uh, Option or Alt, click on that. And we can see um, that the sky is almost white and the trees are really dark. Um, but I'd like to make that sky even whiter and I'd like to make the trees even darker. So I'm going to first apply a curve. Let me just back out a little bit here so I can see a little more of the image. I'm going to apply a curve, um, and we have to do this without doing it in a layer. I have to apply the curve directly to this uh, thumbnail. So we're going to go Image Adjustments and pick up the curves here. right? And now looking at my sky, and I'm going to take the white endpoint here and just kind of pull it over. I believe that my sky is probably this, this little mountain range here. So I'm putting my um, endpoint right through that little histogram, that little mountain range there. And you can see it's pretty much whitened out the sky almost all the way. There's a few areas back here that are not quite white. Uh, over in here as well, but I, I, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to eat up at the edge of these trees. Again, so my point is I want to make a mask here and I want these tree edges to, I want to preserve all the edges of the trees there. Uh, now I can I can deepen the mask, but I, I, I think since I'm zoomed out, let me zoom out again. Okay, uh, I've got these darker areas here. So if I if I deepen the dark point, it makes this part of the sky darker. So I'm not going to do that. Just pull that off. Um, we're going to leave it like that, and I'm I'm going to use the burn tool to burn shadows. Let's bring this down just a little bit, um, and. We're going to go around the edges. This is the, the only thing I need for this mask is just to mask off the trees. So we take the, the burn tool and I'm just kind of burning down the trees up to the edge. I don't want to go too strongly over that edge because I want to preserve that, that sort of edge feather. Um, and the more time, the more you work on the mask now, the more you save your your self work later on. So we're going to try and edit this mask, get it prepped. And I'll I'll speed up the video here just so you don't have to watch this whole process. But Okay, now at this point, I'm going to go through and uh, I just paint with black into this lower area here because the sky, uh, my goal is to allow uh, areas so I can clone from the sky into these dark, into these interior areas a bit uh, to change the color because uh, that halo is a little bit brighter back in those areas. Um, but I don't want to go way into the trees here. So I'm just going to mask, I'm going to paint off a lot of this stuff with just black and we'll do it really quick here.
Now this this white area here, uh, I'm going to use the dodge tool to dodge that back. So I'm dodging highlights. So I, it was burning shadows. I'm dodging highlights now. Usually I don't do it at 100%. Um, OK, good. I, I don't have to get too crazy here. OK. Now, the goal I, uh, is to clone this little halo out. So if we look at this, the, there's sort of a little edge halo that's uh, it's brighter and it's also a different color. So we're going to clone from the sky into this to cover it up. And I've protected the trees with the layer mask, which came from the red channel. But now I just have to click on the uh, sort of pixel uh, icon here for the pixels in that layer, get it off the layer mask so that I can use um, my clone tool to pull the sky over that, that little halo. So uh, this, this part down here doesn't bother me too much, but the, the strategy is to go close to the edge and sample. So I hold down the Alt to sample, and then I don't have to get that crazy or that careful about painting up to each edge there um, and I can just clone from the sky and I'm going to little work on this little area down in here so you can see how I can get into the tree and I'm completely hiding the halo and again we'll we'll speed this up speed up the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this Okay, <clears throat> so now that we've taken care of that, and it, it, it this has a huge effect. You can kind of, if you don't do that, you're just, just going to see that halo everywhere. Um, all right, so we're getting, we're getting down there. We're getting pretty close. Um, the only thing we really need to kind of do now is figure out uh, where the white point and the black point is in this image. Um, and we just want to make sure that we have the tones filling out the range from black to white, uh, the printing range for this image, so that uh, I can set those endpoints, and that really helps uh, when we make a print. So um, what I like to do is find the lightest and darkest point in the image so I know exactly where the darkest point is. It could be any one of these shadows here. I don't know which one is going to be the darkest one. Uh, and where the highlight, you know, there's some little light poles here that might be, that probably should go to white. Um, and uh, the way to find that out is to use a threshold adjustment layer. So we'll use that on top of everything here. 
And we're just going to use this temporarily. Um, the threshold changes it to black or white. And where the image flips from black to white is where this slider is positioned. So right now it's positioned at 50%. Um, so as we go to the left, more and more of the image will go white. And the last thing to wink out will be the darkest area in the picture. So it does look like uh, we've got a, a, probably a little shadow here somewhere. Let's, let's find out. I'm going to call, let's see. I'm going to call this little crevice way back there. We'll call that the darkest point. So I'm going to zoom in. And now what I want to do is place a fixed color sampler. So that's underneath the eyedropper here. If I click and hold, you'll see I have the color sampler tool right underneath the eyedropper tool. So we're going to use the color sampler tool. And I'm going to click right in this area. Uh, we can turn off the eye for that threshold adjustment just to see what we're on top of. And it does look like we're on a very dark shadow. OK, so I'm going to just leave it there. Um, maybe just kind of move the image into what I think is the darkest area. And I want to make sure that my sample size is not at point sample. Uh, usually, I, I settle for 5 by 5 uh, or 11 by 11. So if we go 5 by 5, now when I turn off this threshold adjustment, we can kind of see that this area is now reading 0, 10, 15. Now, I typically, for a print, I like to set my black point to the level of 15, because when we print ink on paper, um, very often what happens is the printer starts, it makes the blackest thing it can at about a level of 15, and all the tones darker than 15 print the same shade of black. So if you want to have some sense of a shadow detail, the next lighter tone than absolute black should be like 16 so that we can see it. So I set the darkest thing in the image to 15, and then that way we get a chance of seeing the next lighter tone uh, when we make a print. It's one of the things that, that makes prints look darker than they really are, um, is we just haven't set the black point properly. So, you know, you can test your paper to find out the exact number, but I found uh, nine times out of 10, 15 is, although it's a little conservative, that's a good place to place your black point. So um, let's back out and I'm going to turn this on again. And this time we'll, we'll go back into that adjustment. Uh, I'm going to find the lightest thing. So I move this slider to the other direction and it does look like the very lightest thing is this little pole back there. So let me zoom in. And I can see this is not 5 by 5, maybe a bit. Uh, you can see the, the pixels in this. This pole is pretty skinny. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and place a point right there. Again, let's check and see what that's on. So this pole had gotten kind of a purple uh, magenta cast to it. I'm pretty sure that's not a purple or magenta pole. I think that's probably a white highlight on the pole, but it's, it's picked up this tone. So we can see the, the value now is 228, 190, and 237. And that's the brightest thing in the image. I'd kind of like that to be neutral and to be brighter. So we've got, uh, you know, I typically set that to 245. Then I try to make everything 245, 245, 245. My black point I'm going to make... 15, 15, 15. But at least now I know where those points are. So I'm going to throw away this threshold adjustment now. We'll back out. And now I'm just going to do a curve correction by the numbers, just to, to change these numbers here. So we're going to put a curve adjustment layer on top. My, my black point, I want to be 15. That means I'm going to have to raise the, the red level. So I'm going to go to the red channel. Go down to the, the lower left corner. That's my black point. And I'm going to just nudge that up. So I, I highlight it. I can drag it up and watch those numbers over here. Watch the numbers go up. And I have to make sure that I, that, that point hugs this left-hand edge of the box. 
And uh, when I get close, I can just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it up. So we'll take that up to 15. Let's go to the green channel. Same sort of thing. I'm just going to nudge it up with the arrow keys. There, now I have 15, 15, 15. Okay, now my white points. We'll go over to the red channel. This, I'd like to make that 245. So I can grab this slider here to move that white point over. And we'll stop when we get it to 245. I'm not even looking at the image. I'm just looking at these numbers. Uh, now the green channel is really suppressed. Let's let's see what happens. I may have to edit this later, uh, but let's put put that green up there. I have to move that quite a bit. It's going to change the color in the image quite a bit. So I think that's probably going too green, but we're going to get this right up there. Uh, 245, 245, and now the blue has to get nudged over just a little bit to 245. There we go. Now everything is still, uh, you know, maybe the uh, the green channel. We go back to the blue again. Uh, I'm just going to use the plus or minus keys to toggle between these points. So I hit the minus key, and that point now is on the black point. I'm going to nudge this over uh, to the... Um, to the right just a little bit to get that to go to 15. That's, you know, we, we, don't, we don't need to be quite that anal, but I'm just using this, doing this for illustration purposes. Uh, I do want this value to be um, at 15, so I'm nudging it, and now everything's at 15, 15. We're still at 245, 245, 245. And now it's gotten kind of green, but I do like what it did to the, the clouds. That's That's actually kind of cool. Maybe it's a little too uh, green, uh, and I can I can place a point. Let's say I, I don't want this area to be quite as green, so I'm, I'm using that little hand tool to find the area in the curve where that color is, and I can just drag it down, and that's making it bluer. And it's also adding just that little bit of extra contrast. Uh, I'm actually okay with this kind of going green like that and it's it's added a lot of interest in this area um, so let's take a look at where we started option or alt to click on that little eye and uh, yeah <laughs> we've really lit this up and uh, created the impression of the light hitting these trees back there and really amped up the feeling of the light raking across the 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 grass here. I think uh, I think I like this. Now, before we we go uh, out of here completely, I just wanted to point out that I've got everything in, in uh, all the areas that I need to control are in separate layers. So, uh, for instance, that that channel mixer in the foreground there that's in a separate layer, so I can always alter. Uh, and there's the, the the one on the trees, I can always alter how strong this is by changing the opacity. Uh, and we can also alter that um, the luminosity blending, which gave us those tre those light trees to begin with. So like I can make the trees look a little bit lighter and then reduce the channel mixer adjustment, which makes that a little less green and uh, the other thing that I, I just realized what I wanted to do is, is change this color to match the more orangey yellow color up here. So let's add, let's do that. Let's add a, a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm just going to look at this area, which is going to be some kind of a red. So I, I go from the master drop down here. You can see that usually people just crank the saturation, you know, or something. Uh, but we can target a specific color. So we're going to go and target reds. So as soon as I go off the master, now I have these little eyedroppers show up. I'll get my leftmost eyedropper, click right on that, and you'll notice how that shifted over so that this little dark area here on this little rainbow gradient, that's right hovered and centered over this exact color, right? So uh, if I want that to go more orange, I'm going to move the hue to the right to push this color from that reddish magenta over into the more orange color. So I move the hue to the right. I'm looking just at this area down here. Uh, 
let's get it uh yeah something like like that let's increase the saturation maybe light lighten it just a little bit so that it kind of now looks like it it's more in that in that ballpark there of the of the clouds uh and let's see if this has let me pull this up to the top let's see if that is affecting anything but that color it's just barely affecting that Let's get that magentas too, which is that that's the color that I was editing. Um, didn't really go very far with that. Let's no. There we go. Let's nudge that over just a little bit more. A little more saturated. And that's pretty much now I like the way that that fits in with the sky. Now I don't want it to affect any of the any other orange color in there, uh, so I'm going to invert that mask. So Command or Control I to make it black, and then I can just paint over that area with a brush. So we'll, uh, we'll paint it in. It's taking a little bit off the purpley color and more into the orange and that's pretty subtle but I like that a little bit better okay <laughs> now we are finally done uh, I just go back and label things so that I know what uh, that that is affecting this this is the stream color um, that's my white point black point I've got the halo edge. Uh, these channel mixers are doing the, the the that teal color into the foliage, and everything's labeled. All right, we're good to go. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. You might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You might consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print, available on Amazon in Kindle, as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Printing, <laughs> digitally lighting, photographing, and retouching faces and bodies. Wow, it's, <laughs> it's a mouthful. I mess it up every single time. All right. Uh, if you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school under the education menu at ferris.com. Uh, my latest Photoshop course is Infrared Photography Workflow, where I go into great detail on infrared photography post-processing custom IR profiles for Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, black and white and color infrared, and many advanced Lightroom and Photoshop techniques. I put a special 30% discount link in the description below. Check it out. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.